How do you do? Did you ever get away with breaking a rule? Sure, we all have. But even if you don't get punished, sometimes breaking one small rule can lead to bigger things. The man in our story committed petty crimes to earn money. Unable to satisfy his greed, he dove deeper into crime and lost everything he'd worked for. Until he learned about the one thing he could never lose. And his heart and mind and life were unshackled. Leander, yeah, are you ready to make some real money? Doing what? Cooking. I'm going to teach you how to cook. Whoa! Is that what I think it is? <laughs> it's sugar, and I'm turning it into rock candy. You're cooking crack, man? I don't want to get involved in this. Why not? You've been dealing coke. I know, but this is a whole other level. Come on, don't you need more money for your rent? Yeah, but I don't want to get busted. There, it's done. See how easy that was? Easy money. I guess it's not much worse than what I've been doing. You want to try it? This is Unshackled. Dramatizing true life stories produced in Chicago by Pacific Garden Mission. People end up on the streets for different reasons. Sometimes a string of bad decisions lands them there. Sometimes it's circumstances beyond their control. No matter what the reason, Pacific Garden Mission welcomes everyone without judgment and offers them the help they need to get back on track. Help means nourishing meals, fresh clothing, hot showers, and a safe place to spend the night. When all physical needs are met, counselors speak to each guest individually to learn about the unique issues that brought them to the mission. Then, they offer programs designed to break destructive patterns and build a strong foundation for life outside our doors. All mission classes and services come free of charge thanks to generous financial gifts from listeners like you. But you don't have to be in Chicago to receive the most generous gift there is. The one gift that can never be taken away, which is what this program celebrates. Now for broadcast around the earth, here is episode number 3588 in the series, Unshackled. The program that makes you face yourself and think. The man in our story grew up in an environment where he felt insecure. He made one bad decision after another, hoping to find the stability he craved. Money, a job, and a family. At first, he justified his misdeeds, thinking they didn't hurt anyone. But after a while, no one could ignore the habits that destroyed him and everyone in his path. You'll learn what those habits were as we bring you the true story of Angel Feliciano, right now on Unshackled. I grew up in Puerto Rico in what I thought was a normal family. I could come and go to my aunts and uncles as I pleased, and they always fed me. We gathered together at my grandma's house every Sunday. At school, I ran and played volleyball and had a few friends. Then my parents got a divorce and everything changed. My mom and I moved to the States, and... I said goodbye to my familiar, happy life. <laughs> hey, hey, new kid. Hey, hey. Hey, hey. I saw you running in gym class. You're pretty fast. You trying out for any sports this year? Sports? I, I like volleyball. Volleyball? That's for girls. I play in Puerto Rico. Uh, guys don't play volleyball here. How about football? Football? Yeah. Don't you follow the Browns or anything? Oh, um, I don't speak English too good. <sighs> okay. Well, it's nice to meet you anyway. Um, what's your name? My name? My name is Angel. <laughs> Angel? That's a girl's name. Hey, maybe you should try for volleyball with a name like that. The kids at school made fun of my name, my accent, everything that made me different. So I kept to myself and became combative and would fight anyone that would make fun of me. 
In the yearbook, I was voted the shyest boy in school. But even though I stayed quiet and avoided trouble, a lot of insecure feelings built up inside of me. Then I moved to Puerto Rico and met a girl who I thought could turn my life around. <laughs> Angel, we're still in high school. It doesn't matter, Evie. I know that I love you. You were my first love, my first everything. Mine too, but you know how my father is. He doesn't even want me to see you, let alone marry you. <laughs> what if we start a family together? Then I'll have to approve a wedding. I don't know, Angel. This is pretty crazy. It was crazy. And selfish. I know that now. My plans seemed romantic at the time. But when Evie got pregnant, reality hit hard. Her father still didn't approve of us, but we got married anyway. At 18, I had a wife and a new baby on the way. I once dreamed of becoming a lawyer, but all that went away. To support my new family, I found a job working on marble floors. <laughs> Slow down, Anil. It's not going anywhere. Oh, I know, but it's delicious, honey. Thank you. How was work today? Oh, uh, you know, same old. Don't you get sick of doing hard labor every day? You were a straight-A student. I thought you wanted to go to college. I have to work to support a child. Maybe I'll go back to school. I need more friends my age. All the other moms are so much older. Are you getting bored with this life? Well... Honestly, so am I. I just think we're moving in different directions. We were so young when we got married. Like so many teenage couples, Evie and I divorced. She went off to live the life she wanted, and I grew more and more bored with my job. My attitude reflected this boredom, and I left my job. Now I have to figure out a way to pay child support. Why don't you deal? People love their coke around here. I'm desperate, man. I need to pay $60 child support like yesterday. Evie, I'll introduce you to this guy. You pay him $5 for a bag, turn around and sell it downtown for 20 bucks. Sell three bags, and there's your child support. I don't know about this. I don't want to get involved in this lifestyle. Just don't do anything stupid, and you'll be fine. Hey... You're not hurting anyone. Until they overdose and die. If they don't get it from you, they'll get it from someone else. Besides, what choice do you have? At the time, my choice seemed justified. I didn't want to go to jail for failure to pay child support. Of course, I'd go to jail for even longer if I got caught dealing drugs, but I didn't worry about that. Eventually, I moved back to the States and worked several jobs and met another woman with whom I had two daughters. After she left me, because we couldn't get along, I heard about a program that would help me get a commercial driver's license. I knew truck drivers made a lot of money. So for the next 10 years, that became my career, along with dealing drugs. How much are you making now driving that truck? About a thousand a week. Ooh, that's a lot of money. Yeah, and I'm still dealing too. Hey, you gotta try this Coke I got, it's perfect. This is awesome. It's nice to be comfortable, right? You want to do another bump before we shoot in the pool? Even though I earned a comfortable living as a driver, I couldn't let go of drug dealing and occasionally using. While driving trucks, I met another woman and moved in with her. I used to avoid trouble and keep my head down, but now I did whatever I wanted to. But no matter how much money or how many women I had, I was never satisfied. Oh, that's beautiful, but... But what? It's pricey. It's perfect. It really is, isn't it? You only live once. And if we go in together... If we go in together, I'm thinking, why stop there? I'm thinking we should buy a house. I'm thinking we can finally start a family. <laughs> I'm thinking we're not even married yet. I wish the kids who made fun of me in school and all the friends and family I grew up with could see me. I was 32 and owned my own house. On top of that, I had a beautiful new daughter and a new truck. No matter what anyone said to me in the past, I made it. Then, everything started to fall apart. Well, this is a great way to end our vacation. I just bought this thing. What's going on? I hope you have some money saved. You can't work until you get that fixed. I didn't have much money saved. I spent it all on a three-week vacation. 
Now I had to spend another $4,000 to fix my truck. That was a huge blow to my finances. So I started doing some long trips to make up for it. I would drive 18 hour stretches at a time. At first I used cocaine as a party aid. Now I use it heavily just to stay awake on the job. The constant drug use made me paranoid and I didn't see any way out. My destructive pattern of heavy spending and drug use caught up with me and took a toll on my relationship. Once you get hooked on coke, you feel like you can't stop. Not without help anyway. From that day on, I was only sober when waiting for my next paycheck. Once I got paid, it all went into drugs. By this time, my girlfriend knew what was going on, and I got tired of lying to her about my drug use. <laughs> we got a babysitter for this? It's a party, baby. Are you having a good time? Not really. I grew out of this stuff in my 20s. Well, come on, you're not that old. I want to go home. Let's go. No, I'm having a good time. You shouldn't drive in your condition. Whatever. If you want to go home, you can go home. Fine. Suit yourself. I drove home from the party after drinking heavily all night. A cop pulled me over and charged me with a DUI. I lost my girlfriend and my commercial driver's license in the same night. Most of my family knew about my addiction, so I had nowhere to stay and nowhere to earn money to feed my drug habit. I went from a moment of, I made it, to living in my car and working a roofing job just to get by. But even that didn't last. I moved to Wisconsin with my brother. Eventually, I left his house and things became even more desperate. Hey, Angel, are you ready to make some real money? Doing what? Cooking. I'm going to teach you how to cook. Whoa! Is that what I think it is? <laughs> it's sugar, and I'm turning it into rock candy. You're cooking crack, man? I don't want to get involved in this. Why not? You've been dealing coke? I know, but this is a whole nother level. Come on, don't you need more money for your rent? Well, yeah, but I can't. Yeah, it's done. See how easy that was? Easy money. I guess it's not much worse than what I've been doing. You want to try it? When I first started dealing drugs, I thought it wasn't a big deal. In my mind, I wasn't hurting anyone. But once I got caught in that lifestyle, I couldn't stop. Now I really was hurting people. I stole from an innocent, hardworking man and lost all my credibility. That night, I sat in my car in a parking lot. Drinking and getting high, flipping through the radio. And his heart and mind and life were unshackled. I listened to the whole show. It was entertaining. I began to look forward to the program every week. Then, I made an important phone call. Good evening. This is Pacific Garden Mission. Hey, I heard about you on Unshackled. I need help. God bless you. You're welcome to come in any time, and we'll help you. I, I don't think you understand. I really need help. I'm addicted to drugs. I lost my job, and I have nowhere to stay. You are not alone. Everyone is welcome at the mission. We even have a program to help men like you who struggle with addiction. I thought about joining the program, but I still thought I could do everything on my own. Then, something happened that made me realize how hopeless I really was. Hey, you got my money? No, I got your money. Why are you here? I've been looking for you, man. Give me the money. I ain't got nothing. You have no idea what I'm capable of. I'll break your... Nah, I should just shoot you. Please, shoot me. I'm a crackhead. You think I want to keep living this life? You know how much I've lost? My family, my children don't talk to me anymore. I'm living in my car. I got nothing. Shoot me. Nah, you're not worth the bully. I don't know what stopped him from shooting me, but he turned and walked away. I sat in my car listening to the radio when I felt an impulse to pray. God, I don't want to do this no more. I don't want to live this life. It just... I don't know how to stop. Unable to stop and unwilling to submit, trouble continued to plague me. I was fired from my job 
and I did the unthinkable. Where'd you get all this stuff? Don't worry where I got the stuff. You stole them? Hey, man, I just need a couple of bucks for gas. Give me ten for this. No, nah, man, no, I'm not buying anything from you. If you don't get away from me, I'm calling the cops. Whatever, man. At that moment, I knew I had to get away from my situation. I started driving towards Pacific Garden Mission. I noticed I was running out of gas, so I pulled into a truck stop wondering what to do. I had no money. I couldn't leave the heat on because that would use up all my gas. So I shivered through a cold night and called my uncle in the morning. What is it, Angel? Hey, I'm really in a jam. Can you help me out? What do you need? Just a few bucks to fill my gas tank. Uh, money again? I know what happened the last time I give you money. You don't need money. You need help. I'm trying to get help, Uncle. I know how it sounds, but I just need to put enough gas in my car to get to this mission in Chicago. They can help me. Okay. Please get help. I'll be praying for you. I promise I will. This time I mean it. I really want to change. I'll give you ten dollars. I'd like to give you some more, but... You know... That $10 was just enough to take me to Pacific Garden Mission. I could see the doors, and eventually, I mustered up the courage to walk into the mission, but I only went in there for meals. I didn't feel comfortable sleeping or showering with all those other people in there, so I slept in my car. I kept walking in and out of the place. Then, one morning, I walked into the auditorium, where a preacher was teaching a lesson. He was preaching about hell. And I felt convicted, and at the end I made my way to the prayer room where I gave my life to Christ. Yet I still did not want to join the program. Before I thought that Christians acted fake, but I could tell what these people had was real and sincere. I wondered what they had. When I heard in another message that God dislocated Jacob's hip, I looked up to heaven and asked God that if he wanted me to join the program, he needed to dislocate my hip. Two days later, my van got towed. I was stuck in Chicago, nowhere to go. God dislocated my hip. I'm so glad God didn't take me literally. As a new Christian then, I'm grateful that he was merciful with my request. On January 6, 2012, nearly two weeks after coming to the mission, I joined their Bible program. Angel, I'm going to give you a chart to keep track of your behavior. You see, there are a lot of rules. You can't eat upstairs, you have to take a shower before bedtime, and so on. I don't understand some of these rules. What's the big deal? The rules are there for a reason. Uh, for example, if people eat upstairs, they might not want to join everyone else for mealtimes. Meals are important for fellowship. I guess you really thought about these things. We did. And it's important to follow even the smallest rules. Look, I'll show you. The Bible says... Uh, well, here... You read it. Right there. He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. And he that is unjust in the least is unjust also in much. Angel, sometimes small sins can snowball into bigger sins. That's what happened to me. I got my girlfriend pregnant, then I started dealing drugs to pay child support, and before I knew it, that's why I'm here. Now you can appreciate why we have so many rules around here. I took the pastor's words to heart. I was so afraid of breaking even one little rule that I refused to eat a little candy bar someone offered me because we weren't supposed to eat upstairs. When I saw other people breaking the rules, I got angry. Pastor, I have a write-up on Marcus. Sure, Angel. Marcus was upstairs eating a bag of potato chips. Oh, well, I'll have to remind him about the rules then. Okay, may I ask you something? Why do you allow people to stay if they continue to break rules? Angel, it sounds like... You're seeing things in black and white. Have you ever learned about God's grace? I know that God loves us. Right. Even though we don't deserve it. That's grace. He loves us no matter what, even when we break his rules. That's called sinning. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So, if it doesn't matter if we sin or not, what's the point of following the rules? Recovery is a process. Uh, nobody can turn into a perfect man overnight. In fact, there was only one perfect man, Jesus Christ. God sent Jesus to live on earth as a man, to face all the temptations that people face, 
yet not sin, and to show us how to love and have compassion for each other. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Is that why everyone here is so nice to me? Even though I've done so many terrible things? At the mission, we try to show Jesus Christ's love. And many of us came from backgrounds similar to yours. So we feel what you've gone through. Maybe, moving forward, you can show compassion to other guests and encourage them to keep pushing towards recovery, one small step at a time. I thought I had it all figured out. Now I'm confused. I thought if I followed all the rules, I would get into heaven. So what happens if you break a rule? Getting into heaven is not about following rules. There's only one way to heaven. Receiving the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Now once you do that, you can never lose your salvation. Jesus can guide your path and lead you away from sin, even grow you. But no man can be perfect. The Lord understands that. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Pastor, I want that. To really know Jesus better. All right, angel. Let's pray. Seven years ago, I asked the Lord Jesus Christ into my heart, and I knew my faith was real. I wanted everyone to see the change I felt inside. I started with my old girlfriend. Who is it? It's me. I want to talk to my daughter again. I've heard that one before. Things are different now. If you just let me in or come outside to talk to me, I'll explain everything. Mm. Okay. I'll come outside and we can talk. My relationships with my daughters and son were restored. Before, when I knocked on someone's door, they didn't answer. Now everyone opens their doors to me. Soon, I was able to talk to everyone in my family again. My aunts, my uncles, and my children. In time, I married a godly and patient woman. We don't have a house, and we don't have all the material things I used to have. But we have God's grace, and there's nothing, nothing that I can do that can take that away from me. And now that I have Jesus, I really have made it. Listening friend, are you in that place that Angel was? The place where no one answers the door when you knock? I'm here to tell you, friend, Jesus will gladly receive you. And he wants you to receive him. He wants a relationship with you. Angel's life changed forever when he received Jesus Christ into his heart. The same can happen for you if you so desire. Just talk to the Lord. Tell him you're sorry for the sins in your life. Receive him as your Savior and trust in him. It's that simple. If you need help in this crucial decision, get in touch with Pacific Garden Mission, 1458 South Canal Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60607.